I hope y'all didn't think that I got rid of my Style Maker Fabrics fall collection swatches because I didn't. I held on to them for one final video featuring them uh, for you guys. And this one is a ton of fun. I did this last spring and you guys really seem to love it. So what I have done is I have taken a bunch of different fabrics from here paired them up with each other, similar to how I did during the swatch video. But this time I'm taking the fabrics that look really cute together, would make a great little outfit. Um, and I'm actually matching them with specific patterns as well. So I've taken some inspiration photos from Pinterest and Instagram, and then pulled out fabrics uh, that would fall in line with that inspiration, and then also pulled out some patterns so that if you sewed the fabric in the patterns, you'll be able to achieve the super cute, super on trend fall fashion inspiration look. So let's jump into it with our very first look. The first outfit is inspired by this picture that I found on Instagram. Super cute, super chic, um, super simple even, I would say. And that's totally fine, right? Um, I think simple is probably better whenever you're sewing in 2020 because um, you can mix and match some of these pieces and make, you know, a little capsule wardrobe if you wanted to as well. So um, to get this look, I wanted to go for a plush sweater knit like you see here and then a corduroy um, for the skirt. The colorway that I chose does not match the photo. The photo colorway is available, but I did think that this was a really beautiful alternative colorway and this also would make the outfit just a little bit less simple, a little bit more unexpected. Um, the patterns, okay, so the patterns I have one indie and one big four, depending on what you like, uh, I've got something for you. All of these uh, big four patterns are available now. And of course, indie patterns are always available. Um, so this is the Panama T uh, by Alina Design Co. You can see if you remove the pocket here, you've got pretty much a basic T pattern. I love this. And then for uh, the Big Four version, I chose McCall 7983. It's actually a bodysuit. And I think a bodysuit tucked into a skirt that sits closely at your waist um, is a very, very great option. Obviously you would make the one with the band and the long sleeves to get the exact look of the inspiration. For the skirt, I have two options as well. This is the Blink Slate Patterns Tillery Skirt. It comes in three links, which is what these little lines are here. And then of course you can omit the pockets, omit the um, belt loops to have something a little bit more clean lined. But obviously the big four option, which is McCall 7, sorry, 6737, is much closer to the inspiration photo in that it has <clears throat> the double placket or the double, well, it's double breasted in a coat. So would it be double hipped? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. When you have like the two buttons, you know, kind of like the sailory skirt. This one though, I would recommend shortening it to get your proportions right because the uh, top is so high up on your chest. If you have a long skirt with it too, it just really lengthens the line and more of your body is hidden. So I prefer a little bit of a shorter skirt when you have a long sleeve, high neck top. So this is option one. Again, there are many colors of this plush sweater knit, many colors of this corduroy. So if this little fall inspired look isn't for you, um, go and mix and match some of those other ones as well. Okay, that was number one, swipe it away. Um, number two is similar, similar um, in that it is like a sweater and skirt combo, but this is the more elevated version of that in my opinion because it has a much chunkier sweater and a longer skirt with a little bit more uh, detail going on there. So for the fabrics I have chosen um, the cable knit sweater. You guys saw the um, swatch video and whenever I came across this I just died and fell in love. It's so beautiful, so ready to wear, so 
awesome. Nobody would ever suspect that you made it and it would make the most gorgeous like oversized chunky sweater. But this color is beautiful and would look great on every single skin tone. Um, I just love this so much. The uh, big, I'm so let's do it the same way every time so that you guys don't get confused. Okay, the indie pattern is the Style Arc Preston. I'm actually not a huge fan of the pockets that they have here, but the concept is right. So um, what I was really looking for from the inspo picture was a sweater with raglan sleeves, which <laughs> is a little bit harder to find than you might realize. Um, but so yeah, if you make this and then eliminate the pockets, you will have a pretty, pretty dead on look there. And then for the collar, just fussy cut it using the center of this here as your band. <clears throat> and then that will give you a nice clean look. I don't think you would want this, um, cable part, this puffy part actually in your neck band. <clears throat> so just fussy cut that in order to get that band to lay nice and flat. But you can see from the back kind of how it would look if you did not have the pockets in it. And then for the big four version, I chose Simplicity 8987. And because it has a raglan, but it also has this like two part sleeve. And the it's like, I thought this was front and back, my bad. This is one front and one front, A and B. Anyway, the whole point of me um, choosing this one was because I was gonna recommend to you guys that you just take the upper sleeve portion and extend it into a longer sleeve, not actually sew a seam there. I think a seam there is great for some fabrics, but not necessarily for this one. So I was just looking for like a plain, raglan sweater and I think you can achieve that just by lengthening the raglan upper arm sleeve and not and eliminating this seam that's right here okay and then for the skirt I have two options you can tell from the inspiration that they really went for kind of a monochromatic look so I wanted to you know keep in theme with that there are a lot of really great lightweight drapey um, rayons in the fall collection so don't feel like these are the only two. There are a bunch you can choose from, but I just love how all the color of the cable knit calls out this color in the tan, but it also calls out this color in this little abstract print as well. So you can see how you'd be able to pair this with so many different things that you might already have in your closet. But for the skirt, I went with two fabric options because I know some of us are floral people, some of us are not so much floral people, so I wanted to give you guys some options um, to choose from there depending on your personal style. Now, the Inspiration skirt is very interesting. I can't say I've ever seen anything like it, but basically it is a skirt. Imagine if this were the front skirt. It is a skirt that has basically a seam that goes up and around your hip like so, and then within that seam, a flounce or a ruffle is sewn and that happens on both sides of her skirt. So I couldn't find anything like that. Um, these were the closest things I could find and I'll talk you through A, why I like them for this pattern versus some of the other ones and B, uh, kind of, it, you know, any kind of little hacks that I would make in order to make it more like the original. So we'll start with the indie pattern. The indie pattern is um, DP Patterns, I think it's called La 402. She's a French uh, pattern designer, so it's like La 402. Um, and it's this really pretty skirt that's very similar to the um, Inspiration, but it only has the ruffle on one side. So it's a bit of an asymmetrical situation happening, which I totally don't hate. Um, I think this concept with the sweater is still super, super cute. But what works about this is that it is close fitting um, at the waist through the high hip and then barely flares out. If you look at the inspiration again, you can see it's a pretty close fitting skirt. What makes it look so fluid and um, have all that movement is the actual ruffle. I do think the length of this would also be great as is as well because she's wearing a midi skirt. 
Okay, the Big Four version is New Look 6640. This has the kind of having some interest, I guess, along the front panel, um, which is why I really, really like this version. There's a longer one and a shorter one. I would opt for the longer one to stay more in line with the inspiration. But again, it's close fitting through the waist and the upper hip and then only flares out after that. If you wanted to make this a little bit more like the inspiration, I would make this version and then um, add a flounce into this seam to give you some more of that movement, which is really, really easy to do. Um, adding a flounce or a ruffle here, just make it really nice and wide, kind of like this one is, so that whenever it drapes down, it looks really beautiful. The wrong side of these fabrics do not look the same as the right side. So that is another one of the sort of downfalls of a flounce is that the wrong side does inevitably show. And you can see that here. I don't mind it so much because it's only a little bit, but if that bothers you, then I would change that to a ruffle because a ruffle is more like gathered and the wrong side doesn't show like a flounce does. But I do think that this would make a super cute outfit in either version, either skirt. Really, really adorable. Okay. Um, next, let's stay in line with this kind of like sweater, lightweight bottom thing happening. And again, I have options for fabrics because there's just so many. I could not decide. So here is the inspiration photo for this look. Um, and you can see, I mean, you've probably seen this happening in ready to wear, in your favorite magazines, in blogs, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so nothing super new or like, you know, groundbreaking here, but I did want to just show you all the great fabrics that you can pair together to achieve this look. Okay, for the top patterns, we have the Yoko top from Jaylee Patterns. And what I was really looking for um, for this inspiration was a top that was very oversized. That's really what I wanted to go for. I think the combination of the oversized top with the frilly skirt is what makes this look so wearable and so cute. You can make the Yoko with or without the collar. Um, so just keep that in mind, but I love how it's kind of like a drop shoulder with a, you know, it's all pretty square and hangs, you know, straight from the body, which is really nice. The big four version is M8112, very basic. It's funny when you guys go look at the pattern cover of some of these big four patterns, you're going to be like, oh my God, I had no idea that was this pattern. The pattern cover of this one is crazy. Um, but the line art is really great and it's in line with um, the inspiration for sure. Uh, so for this one, I would just not do the cuff and I would just, you know, hem the sleeve like this one. That would be the only changes that I would make to the tops. For the fabric, I pulled out the uh, French Terry, super thick, super luxe. This is gonna wear a lot more like a sweatshirt would. Um, which I think is really cute and really great, especially in a boxy style whenever you just tuck a little bit of it into your skirt. And I have two different colorways here. I have one for the green colorway. I mean, how beautiful is this, right? Those look so pretty together. And then I also have this one, a little bit more like quintessential fall. And then for your navies, I have that as the top and then these three as your skirt options. So, so pretty. They all look really great together for different reasons. Um, this calls out this blue here. This one calls out the navy here. And this one just kind of, like there's no exact color blue, but with all of this blue happening and the black happening, and this is such a dark navy too, it kind of just, I don't know, speaks to it very well. For the skirts, I actually have a free pattern. This is more of a tutorial. It's by The Hemming um, and it's called the Cami Skirt. So this isn't actually a pattern you would need to like measure out a bunch of squares and then sew your squares together based on her photo tutorial, but it is really, really cute. And then for the big four option, I have M8097. Um, you can tell this is almost, well, A, it's almost exactly like this, but it's also almost exactly like the uh, big four version as well. So 
I have the skirt, I have the top, and two different colorways for you guys to choose from. If I had to pick just one, I love this. These two together are probably my absolute favorite. I don't know, it's something about the blue background with the green, unexpected, but still looks really, really good. Okay, so that's a fun, cute little version. And then when springtime comes, you can still wear, even though the colorways are like, you know, more fall colors, pair it with a cream top, you know, pair it with something lighter, brighter, and you will get a lot of, a lot of wear out of it um, once the seasons change. Okay, um, okay, that's that. Next up, oh my gosh, sweeping all this away is a little bit bittersweet. It's a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of organization okay check out this next one again I'm not like reinventing style here this is a style that you guys have probably seen a ton of um and that's fine because the fabrics are really what um make this look am I right so for the dress we need a bodycon figure skimming beautiful kind of tight rib knit dress so for the um, indie version, I have the True Bias Nico. Obviously, that came right to my mind first thing. And then for Big Four, I have McCall's 7999. Both are going to give you a similar option or a similar vibe. They both have the like little mock neck that you can leave on or take off and just replace with a band if you want. And then they both have um, a long or a sleeved version. This one you can make long or leave short would also be cute. And same with this one, you can alter the length of this as well. For the fabric, I mean, how amazing and wonderful is this rib knit here? This makes a beautiful dress. It's a rib knit perfect for a dress because it's got a little bit more heft to it. There's just a little bit more going on. Whereas with some of the other rib knits that have a lot more rayon in them, they're a little too clingy, you know, and they would show every lump and bump that you have. But this one, especially made um, with the pattern being drafted to just skim your body, you know what I mean? Not like completely constrict you. Um, I think that would be really, really, really beautiful. It's got wonderful stretch and recovery. So as you move, it's going to look great no matter what you're doing. And then I paired it with this flannel. I mean, how beautiful are those colors together? Obviously, this blue slate gray calls out the same color in here, but this has like the beautiful orange that we all know and love around this time of year. So for the sort of shawl, you can easily just hack one of these yourself and make like a blanket scarf or something like that. But if you're really somebody who likes to have a pattern to follow, uh, Melly Sews, who owns Blake Slate Patterns, has this fleece poncho uh, free tutorial. So similar to that skirt that I just showed you, this is a similar thing. Now, there are some things that I like about this and some things that I don't. Um, it does, it's not open in the front. Uh, like the big four. The big four version is M7202 and this is actually like a button band. So this is more finished. It's more professional looking. Looks like something you'd more likely get in the store. Um, but this is going to, obviously it's free <laughs> and um, it will still give you the look. You might have to do a little bit of hacking if you do want to get the open front like the inspiration photo has. But it's a really simple straightforward. I mean, you could knock this out in an hour. <laughs> I don't know how long the finishing of this one takes, but they're both really quick patterns and both of these fabrics are really, really easy to work with. So I think that doing a little bit of hacking wouldn't be like too overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? But I do think these look absolutely beautiful together. If the bodycon dress is not for you, just make a top. Wear this with leggings or jeans and then put this on as a nice little uh, scarf or a, you know, shawl, a cover up, a poncho, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, you don't have to make the dress, but I do think that look of the dress with like the oversized, you know, billowing um, scarf shawl thing does look really, really chic. And it's still super, super comfortable for the holidays. I mean, wearing this to like a Thanksgiving meal where you might be overeating and need some extra room, 
um, a no waistband is probably your best bet and something that stretches <laughs> is also really, really good. So, um, so yeah, I just think this is, this is super sweet and I love, love, love the inspiration photo so much. Okay, we've got our last one here and probably saved the best for last. Here is the inspiration photo. Do we die or do we die? It is really, really good, am I right? Okay, so let me show you how this all comes together. Okay, um, well first let's start with the top. The top is basically a um, button down shirt. And obviously you could wear this button down shirt styled this way or any other way that you would normally wear a button down shirt. Um, the indie version is the um, perfectly fitted shirt. It has multiple cup sizes, beautiful French uh, French seams. This is by Jay Stern Designs. She's on YouTube as well. She has a lot of really great information. And when you make her clothes, you get beautiful, beautiful finished results. Um, this one is Butterick 6747. I do think that this longer line is more in line with the inspiration photo. So you can lengthen this to get this same look. I also kind of appreciate the fact that this is a little bit more boxy, whereas this one's a little bit more shaped. So you could either remove the uh, princess seams on the front and back to get this look, or just have less shaping in the side seams themselves. But the collars on them are both really good. Um, the sleeves are great. Um, you, will, you will definitely be able to make a Oxford shirt that you will wear over and over and over again. Okay, then layered on top of that shirt in the inspiration photo is a sweater. So you can go back to some of the other sweaters I recommended if you were just really in love with those. Um, but you could also make one of these versions. So noting in the inspiration photo, the sweater is a little bit cropped. It really does hit between the waist and the high hip, like maybe just at the top of your high hip. So keep that in mind when you make either one of these versions, you might need to shorten it. This is the Seamwork Skipper. Uh, you would need to remove this pocket. And I chose this because it has the wide opening at the neckline so that your beautiful collar can pop out and, you know, look really like intentional. Um, same thing with this guy. It has a little bit more of a longer opening. Um, this one seems a little bit more cropped than this one does. So you might have to do less um in terms of lengthening and shortening it but this is McCall's 8070 it's you I don't know what is happening with the sleeve and the inspiration photo because it is covered up by the jacket but seeing as I recommended this plush sweater knit again I think I would opt to remove all the bands so I would not have a band at the wrist or at the hip I would just try and keep them all nice and smooth and just hem them straight on. Okay, so those are those options. And then for the jacket, so this is a reversible quilted fabric. It's really nice, really puffy, really plush, really lovely. So I would put this side on the outside, the darker gray side. And then the patterns that I chose are the Tamarack jacket by Closet, no, by Grain Line Studios. Um, this is pretty much dead on for the inspiration. Am I right? I mean, they look exactly alike. Um, so <laughs> even though I have an option for big four, I would probably, even if I'm a big four person, I would seriously consider trying this one because they are so, so identical. First with the binding finish, with the neckline being very simple and plain, with the curved hem, I mean, they're, they're, almost a dead ringer for each other. Um, so this is a really good option. This has instructions for quilting and putting in these vertical lines. Obviously you would not have to do that because your fabric comes pre-quilted, which is what is so amazing about this. And that means you're basically just sewing together side seams and putting on some sleeves and then finishing your raw edges. It comes together really, really quickly. 
for the big four option, I did um, pick Vogue 9275. It's a little bit different, a little bit sportier. You would have this collar to contend with. You can leave it. It's like a rib knit collar. Um, but if you leave it, then it might get in the way of your Oxford shirt. You can remove it pretty easily because the um, pattern is lined. So it would not be difficult to finish off the neckline um, without it. But it's just definitely something that you would have to like look into. Um, and then you can see on the inspiration photo, there are no cuffs. So you can remove these and just hem it like this. And then um, I think that this is a little bit longer. This comes like mid thigh. So you'd have to, I mean, if you want it to be exactly like that, honestly, if you want it to be exactly like that, just buy this one. <laughs> there are, I, I do like the idea of a long straight across hem for some body types. Um, so just pick whichever one um, you like best, either the shorter curved hem or the longer straight across hem. Okay, lastly, we have leggings. So legging options are the five out of four ninja pants. This pattern is free. Um, and you can see it comes in a bunch of different lengths, which I love, and also a bunch of different rises, including maternity. Um, so it's just a really great, straightforward uh, legging pattern that I really, really love. The big four option is McCall's 7874. I actually found it really hard to find a big four pattern that had the larger yoke. This to me is what makes the difference between a wearable legging and one that just you have and it's okay but you just don't love it when you have that elastic in the little itty bitty waistband it's just it's not the same like you want a proper yoke on your leggings which is why I finally finally found this one actually there this is a like a combo that comes with like a sweatshirt type thing as well that's also really really cute so be sure to check out 7874 for a cute little athleisure outfit um okay so now let's talk about the fabrics and see how I kind of paired them together so we have here the Oxford shirt which is in this really crisp beautiful like sky blue color then you pair on top of that this really deep, rich olive green. Then you've got your gray layered on top of that. And then you've got your beautiful olive legging. Like none of the colors are the same, but they all kind of have the same tone. They all, I don't know, they just all go really, really well together. Obviously there are other colors of this. There are other colors of this. There's more of a gray version of this. So you can choose some different colors, but I just thought this one was just subtle enough with a little bit of pop from this really bright, beautiful blue Oxford um, that would really like elevate the outfit. I think that it already looks super chic. And I think choosing a colorway like this versus just black and white um, will just give it that extra something, that extra little pop um, that makes that just makes it stand out. It makes it look like something that you wouldn't just walk into a store and see, you know, sitting there on the table for you. Um, all of these fabrics are lovely. This is the dream legging fabric. You guys are going to love this for leggings so, so much. It's going to do a little bit of compressing. It's going to hold everything where it needs to go, but it's also going to stretch with you as well. It's really, really awesome. And I've already talked about the quilted, um, the quilted double cot double quilted double knit I guess I don't know what this is a quilted double something um and then the plush sweater knit we have in a bunch of colors and then the two colorways of the Oxford so those are all of my outfit suggestions it's truly so much fun to put this together such cute outfits right and honestly when you have the right fabric paired with the right pattern you really cannot go wrong a lot of these patterns for fall are super super simple nothing over complex you're just really letting the texture and the vibrancy of the fabrics really really speak for themselves so i would love it if you guys made some of these outfits that i featured in the video today if you do that please 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 let me know tag me if you post it on social media i would just be so so thrilled but that is going to do it for me today and for all the swatches 
These are going to a lovely home from a woman who won them on my Instagram giveaway. So they're headed her way where she can enjoy them and take them all in and let their lives live on forever and ever. I just really don't have the heart to throw them away ever. Um, so we're going to pass it on and who knows, maybe it'll be like the new um, flat Stanley? Is that that thing's name that you pass around? Whatever. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye.